Hi, and welcome back to That's Entertainment, the weekly entertainment show where we look at all the interesting entertainment news from last week, this week. According to the Wall Street Journal, a Comcast owner of NBC Universal, which includes the Hollywood Studio Universal and streaming service Peacock, is looking into a potential tie-up in the US with either rival media giant Viacom CBS or AVOD streaming platform Roku. Although a Comcast spokesman called the report pure speculation, such a deal would significantly increase the company's streaming profile. It was also announced this week that NBC Universal has struck a deal that's made Peacock available via Amazon Fire TV. Amazon has more than 50 million monthly users of its Fire TV devices, which would represent a huge potential market for Peacock. By the end of Q1 2021, the streaming services announced it had 42 million signups. But according to the Wall Street Journal, less than 10 million of those are paying subscribers. And according to a report in The Hollywood Reporter, streaming platforms have had to rely more than ever on archive film and TV titles during the COVID pandemic. With countless new film releases postponed and TV show productions delayed. Consequently, there's been a huge increase in demand for the restoration work that's been required to ensure that all movies and shows can be presented in the quality of today's audiences expect with many getting 4K and HDR makeovers. Well, that's good for the catalogue, that's for sure. And actually, one of the things that was very concerning about film is that that archive content on celluloid definitely deteriorates over time. So if we're moving towards the digitization of that stock of wonderful old films, well, that's great news for everyone involved. According to, to Paramount's president of Worldwide Home Entertainment, Bob Bucci, for the period of April 2020 through March 2021, our home entertainment library sales were up by 45% globally compared to the prior year. Our team has restored or remastered more than 50 titles in just the past couple of years, and there are so many more on the docket. It's not just the older movies that are being looked at. Pixar, for example, remastered all of its early features, such as 1995's Toy Story and 1998's A Bug's Life, to include HDR and Dolby Atmos when viewed on Disney+. Grover Crisp, Executive VP in Asset Management, Restoration and Preservation at Sony Pictures, also highlighted how busy his team has been upgrading TV shows. This past year has become really active. We finished the complete remastering of Seinfeld, and we are now just finishing Dawson's Creek. These are all 4K and HDR, and these are the things the broadcasters and streamers seem to be really interested in right now. Well, just goes to show that how long a franchise can last. You know, things like Seinfeld, Friends, you know, these TV series that had cachet, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, I'm sure is about to making a massive comeback. You know, it's great content and, you know, it continues to drive audiences. Finally, here's our roundup of some of the most interesting production deals announced by streamers recently. The biggest story of the week has to be the deal that's been signed between Steven Spielberg's Amblin Partners and Netflix. According to Variety, Amblin is expected to produce at least two films a year for Netflix for an unspecified number of years. The Netflix movies do not have any budgetary or genre requirements attached to them. They also receive some type of theatrical release, as have other Netflix picks, such as The Irishman and The Marriage Story. But that will be decided on a case-by-case basis. Well, that's interesting that someone like Steven Spielberg is finally doing deals with Netflix. And if we look at Netflix's track record with large franchise movies or you know, large blockbuster movies, it hasn't had any massive notable successes. It's been much more successful in its TV series. I think Netflix film productions are good home movies, but I haven't seen anything that's really blown me away. And this could be the beginning of the major producers moving over to this platform. So I'll be very interested to see what happens in terms of the quality of production and storyline that comes out of this. As I've said, Netflix hasn't released a franchise in the film area like a Star Wars. And I think, you know, all these platforms are looking for that right now because, you know, the storylines will last forever and they can be constantly remastered, remade and explored in other genres and uh, and peel offs from the main uh, from the main storyline. While Variety also noted that it's possible that Spielberg may even direct some of the projects, this is far from guaranteed as many Amblin productions, such as Green Book and 1917, feature relatively little involvement from the Oscar-winning filmmaker. That doesn't matter. He still runs an incredibly good stable of people that do, you know, fantastic work. You know, there's that old saying that, you know, how does that go? Um, It's always better to have an army of donkeys led by a lion than an army of lions led by a donkey. And I think, you know, 
Spielberg's track record, I mean, he's the absolute elite within Hollywood. No doubt his production studio is going to be coming out with some great content for the Netflix space. And I think this is a very interesting paradigm shift for, for Netflix in terms of future storytelling opportunities and successes. So again, watch out for this one. I think it'll be good. Sony have signed a deal with Netflix that will see their movie adaptation of the award-winning stage show Matilda, based on Roald Dahl's children novel, debut worldwide on the streaming service in December 2022. But there will be one exception. The film is to be given a regular theatrical release in the UK from December 2nd, 2022, with a standard theatrical window to follow. Disney Plus have announced plans for the eight-episode series, which will, uh, will be a prequel to the studio's live-action Beauty and a Beast remake. Luke Evans and Josh Gad will reprise their roles as Gaston and Le Fou in a story that will show how the two became best friends and reveal why a prince was mystically transformed into a beast. Again, franchise and spin-off stories. We're going to see a lot more of these. Yet another Warner Brothers DC comic character is coming to the small screen with the news for HBO Max are working on with Bad Robot Productions on a live action series featuring Madame X, aka the 1970s mystical heroine Madame Xanadu. Apple TV announced its first Anglo-French drama, Liaison. The show is written by Spiral, uh, Virginia Brack, and the cast will include Vincent Cassel, a big fan of him, Eva Green, big fan of her, and Peter Moulin. Netflix have announced plans for three animated children's shows, A Tale Dark and Grim, which will follow Hansel and Gretel as they venture through various grim fairy tales, Dogs in Space, Tales of Genetically Enhanced Canines on the Search for a New Planetary Home for Humankind, and Supergiant Robot Brothers sees two giant robot siblings defending the Earth from intergalactic evil. Seth MacFarlane's foul-mouthed talking teddy bear is moving from the big screen to the small screen, with news that uh, Peacock have commissioned a 10-episode comedy series, Ted, uh, thought to be a prequel for the two movies. Um, well, that's good news. Netflix is adding to its library of titles adapted from video games, with news of two animated series spun out of the successful Ubisoft Far Cry games franchise. That's a hell of a franchise. Peter Jackson's new take on the 50-plus hours of the Beatles footage that acclaimed filmmaker Lindsay uh, Hogg, originally shot for his uh, Let It Be documentary, has grown. The newly edited The Beatles Get Back will now debut over three days on November 25th, 26th, and 27th, with three two-hour episodes. And finally, legendary comedian Jerry Seinfeld will co-write, produce, direct, and star in Unfrosted in Netflix. The film will see Seinfeld present his own unique take on the origins of the pop-up breakfast food, the Pop-Tart. My God, there is more content than you can wag a stick at coming out now. Like, well, how are we going to find all this time to watch this stuff? But, you know, that's great. You know, entertainment is booming. There's never been a greater time to be a producer. There's never been a higher demand. And I'm quite happy to see, you know, the interesting things that are going on with the streaming platforms in terms of collaborations with, with cinemas as well. I think... Uh, more content is good for everybody. That's all for this week. Feel free to like, subscribe, and comment in the comment section below. If you've got any ideas you'd like us to address in our show or our reports, do write in. Uh, we've been running a very interesting series of webinars over the last uh, few months. Plus, we ran a hackathon down in Porto. The links are in the description below. Click on those. Check out all the great information that we're sharing. Remember, we share this video both to LinkedIn and to YouTube. Have a great week, everyone. Goodbye.